So we're here at uh, the European Car Center Week in, uh, in, in Brussels. Uh, Arnaud, you're the, uh, the, uh, the, the founder of uh, Ulule. It's a, a crowdfunding uh, platform and just have your talk uh, on stage uh, about multinationals entering the crowdfunding ecosystem. Uh, first, uh, we, al we also did an interview uh, last year in, in, uh, in, in Brussels. Absolutely. But can you share some more information on what, uh, what your company, uh, company is? Uh, Ulule is uh, the one of the biggest uh, reward-based platform in the world uh, for European-based crowdfunding platform we're the biggest one uh, because you have big you know US platforms uh, but which are not in Europe um, and so we are here to help uh, creative innovative and charity projects come to life um, so it's reward-based so basically it's completely forbidden uh, to give you know equity into a project or to reimburse uh, with or without interest uh, and so, so far on Ululi, it's 10,400 projects that have been financed for about 4 million euros uh, and it's uh, more than uh, 800k users with about uh, 1,000 users that register each day on the platform. So uh, it's no, you know, quite a big growth, uh, half of what we've done. We've done it within the last, last 12 months. Uh, because we double our activity each year, uh, so well it's uh, it's getting bigger and bigger, little by little, uh, and well it's uh, something great, uh, uh, a great experience, and we are really uh, enjoying what we are doing for those projects. Okay, sounds good. There's uh, there are also some different people with different uh, backgrounds over here uh, uh, presenting. Uh, we also had a, a, a talk about the equity. Uh, uh, campaign and also, of course, we also got the uh, the, the lending part. Um, you, uh, uh, we were talking also also about about crowdfunding and cooperations with existing organizations mm -hmm. uh, like BB Paribas, who is also the, the sponsor of, of the of the crowdfunding week. Uh, uh, is your partner? So how did how did you two came together? Oh, in fact, just by phone call, <laughs> it often happens like that. Uh, basically, we were, we've been quite for a long time thinking about uh, you know partnering with uh, institutions, brands, etc., uh, etc. Et it's quite logical in, in our mind because we are just the first step for a project. We are just here to help the project get bootstrapped, uh, to launch, to get the first financing. But then, if you really want to help the project, you should try to build some bridges with other actors that can help them greatly in other ways. Uh, this is our vision from the very beginning when we've set up Ululi because we never played the game of, you know, saying, okay, banks are the bad guys. Uh, we think it's quite good if you want to get some journalist quotes uh, okay. to say that you are going to replace them, to disrupt them because, you know, buildings are the bad guys. But uh, if you look at it in a quite pragmatic way, it's a bit simplistic. Uh, and well, uh, one day, in uh, May 2013, we received a phone call uh, from someone who was directly working uh, with uh, the head of communication of all the BNP Paribas group, uh, and they wanted to meet us just to have a talk. And so we went there, we met them, and a few months later, we said, okay, let's begin with um, something quite uh, easy to do, is just uh, be a partner of the Yululi Tour, which was a Tour de France uh, that we made. Uh, we went in many cities, organizing workshops, conferences, etc., uh, to create visibility about what is crowdfunding, uh, to bring in some project creators, to have them testify about their, uh, you know, their experience. And after this positive experience, in which we also went in some BNP Paribas innovation centers, which are you know places specialized for innovation uh, in innovative clients. We decided to work together in a more deep manner and so we created this partnership and little by little we are adding bricks into this partnership with uh, dedicated uh, activities uh, either for you know uh, we have we have a program for uh, film projects short movies uh, projects uh, we have a program for um, you know social entrepreneurship uh, we have a program for music which is a play and now we are integrated, integrating within uh, EloBank, uh, within their web ecosystem, uh, we are integrating a crowdfund, a reward-based crowdfunding solution powered by our API. So little by little, we are going further. And, and why, why are they so in interested? Because uh, you hear many banks uh, talking about equity-based or, 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 or uh, debt-based crowdfunding, uh, but not about uh, uh, donation-based crowdfunding or pre-sales. So, so, so why, do, why do they really uh, are interested in, 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 in your proposition. Yeah, in fact, if you look at these two worlds of, uh, let's say, donation and reward-based crowdfunding versus 
Investment-based crowdfunding, uh, it's not at all the same and investment-based crowdfunding, particularly lending-based, you're in fact in some activities which are, which might be in competition with classical bank solution, you know, bank debt. Uh, so our vision is that what we do is not in competition because in fact any project when it begins, uh, it has been the case for centuries, always begins with love money. And in fact what we do when you look at it in a very basic and pragmatic way, it's just if we digitalized uh, the, the fact to collect love money. And the fact to digitalize it, to put it on a web platform, just make it much more useful and powerful because it gives you the possibility to go much uh, further and to try to get in touch with people you do not know at all by some snowball effect. And when you've understood that, well, it's quite logical to try to work with other financial institutions uh, because they are just going to do the next steps. We can do this first step, but we can't give a debt to some projects that might need a debt for maybe much more money. And, uh, and so this is a shared, uh, shared vision we have with BNP Paribas because they know, they have, I think they know that, this is one of the reasons they work with us, that the f their future clients are now on crowdfunding platforms, on reward-based crowdfunding platforms. It's the same reason, in my understanding, why they decide to work, for example, with co-working spaces. Co-working spaces is a place where you have multiple entrepreneurs that are launching tomorrow's business in a physical world. And yeah. we are doing the same in the digital world. Yeah, so, so, it's, so it's, it's their way to, to connect to their future business. It might be a good idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think I guess it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also think about it, uh, also also the, the 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 lending part of crowdfunding is I think also not really a a really big danger for them because in the end I also talking to guys uh, working at banks and they would say okay but uh, uh, when does a a loan doesn't cost you any money anymore and they say okay uh, just what of course there are much more <laughs> things to say about it, but say okay let's say uh, every loan uh, under two hundred thousand euro. They don't make any profit of it, mm. so so that's too that's much compliance, yeah, too much process, yeah. too much. So then it's it's also really logical to work together uh, uh, and also facilitate. But I'm talking to quite some startups there also because all startups they're looking to or or, or 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 young organizations they're looking to the big corporates because they think okay there's the money. But in the end, many uh, entrepreneurs I'm talking to they, say, uh, uh, they try, but in the end they say okay yes they got a lot of money. But in the end, I'm not going to work together with you because you're too slow. Uh, we're not going to change you. So, uh, in what way did you manage to keep the speed into the corporations uh, we've worked uh, with, uh, within the corporation? Yeah, in fact, uh, we managed to do it um, because we had we had a vision, a common vision, but we did not decide at the very beginning of all the things we are going to do together. We just said, okay, it's great to work together. Let's just make something extremely simple, which is basically most of it, the first step were basically just communication and little by little, we, you are going to meet a lot of people in our organization and little by little, we are going to go much deeper and deeper into operational things. And when we set up the partnership, when you think about it, it was just, uh, it was less than two years ago. I would never have thought that something like hellocrowd.be would have been possible. Because they said to us, reward-based crowdfunding, you do it. It's great that you do it, but we think that it's some risky activities. We do not want to be involved in some reward-based activities. It was their understanding at this time, which was just a close time. And in fact, little by little, they said, okay, finally, it might be interesting that we could do it in our own ecosystem, web ecosystem. And so, if we had thought at the very beginning, at day first, if we had said, okay, the objective is to do that, it would never have happened. So we just did it with them in a very iterative way and they had the same feeling because they have some experience, you know, working with small companies and startups and they know they are a huge company and if they begin, you know, trying to do the best at day one, it's never going to happen. So in fact, it's iterate little by little, be patient. Even if sometimes you, you, you saw a lot of things that you could do together. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that with a, with a bigger organization, it's, it takes time. But it's the same with a startup, you know, because 
we we have a, a story which is not the most basic uh, of all startups. We did not make um, any uh, VC round, uh, so we have quite limited means. So it means that we are not able, for example, to develop things as fast as we could want to do it. And so it's the same for the partner. Sometimes, uh, well, they would like us to have developed already such functionalities, but it's not the case. It's not already done. So I think uh, each one has its specificities, its advantages, uh, but definitely it's completely different ways to yeah. work. So. Yeah, and I think it's, it's also good not to go too fast. I think uh, yeah. we're, we're now with all the Iterate, new techniques, say, we say, all right, go, grow as fast as you can. But I think also because of my, of my, of my branding background, that uh, uh, growing too fast is, is also not really a, a good sustainable model. Uh, yeah, you, I think do. you get to test a lot of things before. Uh, it's impossible to be sure that your model at a time will be your model forever. And so yeah. if you want to go too fast, maybe you are going to go too fast in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's also possible. <laughs> and then you uh, so. hit the wall and then you uh, <laughs> die. Uh, you also gave some examples of other uh, corporations like Sony, uh, who also did some crafting uh, campaigns on a Japanese platform. Yes. Um, and finally on their own platform. Yeah. And what do you think? Because when I think about crowdfunding, especially uh, the, 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 the donation and reward based crowdfunding, uh, there also is, is a, a, a good guy feeling with the entrepreneurs behind. Uh, because in the end, of course, you want to have the products, but you also uh, identify yourself w uh, with the makers uh, and their dreams. And you also want to help them realize their dreams. And what way do you think that when a corporation like Sony is going to do to really go going to use crowdfunding more to test uh, if their audience wants to have their products? And what way can they uh, also uh, get this personal connection with their crowds? Uh, it's just not the same. Uh, anytime you do a reward-based crowdfunding platform, you have to to give visibility to the project creator which is often not the CEO, which is just the creator within the company. And either you do that, and in this case, you are able to create empathy, or you do not do that, and in this case, you are just perceive of them, you know, cold-blooded big company. And uh, this is one, one of the reasons why I think um, big companies, multinational companies, are not, when they are project creators, the most successful project creators, because they do not manage to create these same personal relationships uh, even if they have, you know, big communication means, it's not everything. It's, you know, crowdfunding, reward-based crowdfunding, you have to have multiple stones, multiple bricks. And uh, yes, having a good communication budget and big communication possibilities is extremely important, but you also need to have a great story and in the feeling of the public to have legitimacy. And definitely that might be some something that lacks for those type of actors. So sometimes they can be successful, but Lots of times they are not as successful as an independent entrepreneur. Um, so, in the end, uh, my vision about that is that we are here to help any project creator, whether it's a big company or an independent, and in the end, no one is obliged to back a project for the crowd, it's the judge, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the end, it's also always the crowd investing because uh, companies, they don't invest in crowdfunding campaigns because they don't know how to to, to do it with their financial department. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've talked to, to some of them and I tried to sell them some things to crowdfunding, but in the end, they, they, uh, they just say my time, just send me an invoice, uh, I'll give you the money, but don't make me uh, uh, take my credit card <laughs> of the company <laughs> and then uh, invest it in, uh, in your campaign. Uh, you also gave the, uh, the, the example of the, of the Oculus Rift of Facebook. In the end, because uh, wh what, what happened over there, uh, the crowd uh, through, through Kickstarter, they, they uh, pledged to the company, uh, uh, they bought the, the, the Oculus Rift, and in the end, uh, a couple of months or years later, they sold uh, the company uh, to, to Facebook for, uh, for quite some money, and then the crowd was disappointed. What I wonder is, because in the end, when you look legally, they were right, uh, the guys of Oculus Rift, because people, they didn't invest, they, they didn't have shares in the company, uh, so they didn't have any right on uh, uh, a part of the uh, sum of money that Facebook uh, paid for the company. But on the other side, if you look at the more long-term and strategic uh, parts, maybe it was good when it would give them some money, because in the end, the crowd was really uh, having a really strong bond with the organizations. They really uh, uh, were feeling they were also part of the success of Oculus Rift. And in the end, okay, and legally they had nothing to, to uh, uh, to worry about, but th they could also say, okay, thank you for uh, bringing us up to, to, uh, to the level. 
we know you have no rights to any compensations because yeah, <laughs> you don't have any equity in the company, but we respect your contribution and we're going to give you a small part of the uh, uh, sum uh, of what Facebook pays. And then you make really from a crowd who's really uh, dedicated to your company, but then angry because they think, okay, <laughs> you're making money uh, uh, on behalf of our, uh, of our success. Um, but then you really ha would have a crowd for life. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's not so easy because if, if they would have done it, why would they pay only at the time of the buyout of Facebook and not uh, any uh, not royalties on all future projects? And uh, uh, yeah, you have legal aspects, and I think they might have thought about it. But uh, a judge could consider that if you do it one time, you might uh, ex make people expect that you could do it many times on any future iteration of the company, and and. Anyway, um, the Oculus Rift sto uh, the Oculus story is, is quite typical of the web. On the web, you only, you mainly hear the voice of unhappy people. But it's mainly unhappy people who take time, you know, to make commentaries, etc., etc. And people which are happy with the story, most of the time, they just do not, do not spend time to write something or to shout it out. And so, uh, lots of, you know, observers, journalists had the feeling that uh, the whole crowd were felt betrayed by Oculus uh, managers, uh, while, uh, you know, uh, typically from my perspective, I was really happy for them. Well, yes, I, I backed Oculus Rift and then it's a great success story. Maybe I participated in it, but when I backed it, I never expected to get a return on investment. And I think I'm not unique, you know, I think lots of people think about it. And I think, in fact, the majority of people think that. Yes. Yeah, so Just that it, it was the first time so something like that happened and it's also due to the purchase price of Facebook. They purchased it for $2 billion. It's completely huge, it's completely crazy. And I think this is also why it created, you know, this, uh, this, this, this effect, uh, this Oculus Rift effect, but uh, you have all other, many other success stories of much smaller companies that got bought after uh, doing a successful crowdfunding campaigns. No one hears about it. It's just a successful entrepreneurship story, that's great. Well, the bootstrapping has, with, has been done with reward-based crowdfunding, and then the, the project just keeps going on. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. purpose of reward-based yeah. crowdfunding. That's right, yeah. Maybe yeah. here it was just a bit extreme with this purchase price of two billion. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and then also people are, when they're angry, they are sharing it on, on, on social media. Yeah, definitely, happy, much just, more than... Uh, so and journalists are really happy to, to, to pick up these stories, of course. Yeah. Of, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Other discussion. Um, when, you, uh, when you're looking at, uh, from the last question, uh, when you're looking at, at, at the corporations uh, uh, between a, a, a startup and, and a existing corporation, at what way do you think that you really can change a corporation by, by, by these uh, uh, partnerships? Uh, because in the end, I see lots of uh, deals and, 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 and then I think, okay, it's really smart marketing. But in the end, are you really going to, to fundamentally change the organization or is it just a nice marketing and PR instrument and then they will continue doing what they did for, for centuries? Mm, well, well, it's a good question, but uh, my view when I work with a company is not that I need to change them. You know, with their business, it's their company, they do what they have to do. Uh, I'm ex someone extremely pragmatic, so I only want to work within win-win-win relationships. When I say win-win-win, the third win is for the Yululi community. In this case, for this partnership, I definitely saw that it was a win-win-win relationship because BNP Paribas won something else also, and the crowd, it would, we would have the possibility, thanks to them, to create you know, incentives for project creators, mechanisms to give them additional visibility. Uh, additional funding, etc., etc., and uh, in the end, the fact that we work with them participated in changing little by little this organization because some people in their organization, which is quite big, learn now deeply what is crowdfunding, have a much better understanding of that, and it gave them a different perspective of this model of funding, model of launching projects. So little by little, a lot of people within this organization understand really what it is and think that it's something that they should get inspired by. So sh they should maybe try to work with. And the best example, once more, is with HelloCrowd, HelloCrowd.be. Two years ago, when we began working with BNP Paribas, I think something like that would never have been possible. Little by little, it became possible 
because we've just learned to know each other, we've just understood the differences, so we've just understood in a better way what we do, why we do it, and so little by little it became possible, and maybe it changed a little bit this organization, but it was not, you know, the purpose, that's the basic. So, uh, well, I think, yes, uh, when we work with a, com with a company, with an institution, uh, with any big already existing actor, yes, we participate in changing them. But it's not, you know, uh, our basic purpose. We are here to give life to projects, to make good things happen, which is uh, our baseline. And uh, we just want to work with people who have the same vision. And then you see if it participate in making them evolve, well, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's not the basic purpose. No, uh, uh, I think it's a good one. Okay, thank you very much uh, thank you for the interview. And uh, see you probably next year again. Yeah, somewhere. it was a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.